Anyone with a dinghy that has sweet lines will tell you that they attract a lot of attention wherever you take them. This attention can take many different forms. I understand that because one of my favourite things after a day sailing and cruising is to sit back with a glass of wine and watch moonlight bobbing around on the anchor. I was thinking about how much there is to learn about handling small boats to make the cruising experience one of peace and satisfaction. Tying up safely and securely is an important part of seamanship and if done properly it will take the stress out of coming ashore and resting for a while. There are many things to think about when tying up. Tides, currents, shore structure, type of bottom and many more things all need to be taken into consideration. The right decisions about how to make the boat fast will determine whether it feels safe to walk away. Anchoring off the shore a little way out is probably the simplest and easiest method. You need to have the right kind of anchor and plenty of rope, sometimes called road, and even for a small cruising dinghy, a couple of metres of chain will come in handy. I'm going to deal with the subject of anchoring in detail in a later video. If you do anchor a little way out, take into consideration the type of bottom, as this will require the right kind of anchor, with enough holding power in either sand, mud or rocks. I have a small Danforth sand anchor with 2 metres of 6mm galvanised chain and about 30 metres of line. Be prepared to let out between 3 and 5 times the depth, depending on the wind, the waves, the tide and the current. Tying off securely also means that what you tie onto is sufficiently strong for the purpose, both in the boat and on the shore. If you're planning to spend the night sleeping on board, you need to go through a mental checklist. In this case there were no tide, waves, current or wind, so it was perfectly safe to tie up between two fallen trees. I once placed a stern anchor and tied up to a tree just off the shore. I hadn't allowed enough line for the tidal fall and the strong current wanted to sweep the boat away between the taut bow and stern lines. As I was watching this play out from the shoreline, I was able to narrowly avert a disaster. Should the gunnel have dipped in, the boat would certainly have been swamped. In fact, later on when I was researching this location on the internet, I saw a couple of examples of boats that had indeed been swamped doing the very same thing. I also have a smaller shore anchor which I can carry up the beach and bury in the sand if needed. It's sometimes called a grapnel anchor or a folding fluke anchor. It works well if you physically bury it in the sand and it's not a bad option for anchoring on reef or coral. Paradise, the grandest prize known to me. Paraclete shows a pair of hearts to the king. Sun applies. The it's even better if there's some shore structure such as a tree or some rocks to tie off on. You just have to make sure that the object is strong enough to take a substantial load. If you're intending to tie off onto some shore structure, beware of getting your legs tangled in the line as you wade to the boat. I once stepped into the loop in a rope as the boat was rising and falling on a small swell. The loop tightened around my left ankle 
and I still have a scar on my Achilles tendon to remind me of the danger. Fortunately, I stumbled forward in the direction that undid the loop. Had I gone backwards, I might well have amputated my legs. The forces are that strong. If you're enjoying this video series, please click on the like button. It helps more like-minded people discover the videos. And while you're at it, click on the subscribe button and set the notifications so you'll know when I publish the next video. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments section.